as friendly and simple. The setup is not ideal. Um, maybe a few words. Uh, it's uh, very, very, uh, it's a lot of fun for us to come in those seven with the new product and, and this year with the new product line because we believe we can really create something. But you know, when I see Tim with a pink shirt, it's quite different than what we've been doing in the past. Typically, our staff wear yellow and, and black, and now pink is quite different. Uh, maybe a few words on BRP uh, and the IPO. As you know, we were a spin-off of Bombardier in 2003. Uh, we're a standalone company since that time, private company. But uh, one of our main shareholders, Bain, who owned 50%, owned at the time 50% of the company, their goal in business is to acquire companies that have potential, help them to grow, and at one point sell it. And that's what uh, we're doing right now. Then uh, we started because the <coughs> we, we had a pretty good run from 2003 to 2007. Uh, the recession hit, it, it hit pretty, pretty bad in eight and 2008 and 2009. Then we had to step back, and now with uh, the, the uh, recovery that is very slow worldwide, but the recovery that is happening, we felt uh, at the beginning of this year that it was time to go public. And uh, we're very happy uh, the, of the, the, the success of the IPO. For me, I'm, I'm living an incredible uh, experience because, you know, I've been with BRP 24 years, has a, a big Bombardier and after that a private company, but to bring BRP public was a quite, uh, quite a thrill and it's still a thrill. We had yesterday our second call with analysts and investors and we were learning uh, every day. But one thing I want you to, to remember, uh, I had the chance to be on the road to sell our story to investors. We had the... Uh, we had uh, uh, we visited about 15 cities in Canada, United States, and in Europe to sell, to meet investors and sell our story. And when we talk about a company who was in 1995, basically two product lines, Skidu and Sidu. Uh, and for a dealer in the South, we were a one product line company. And today, when we look at our product portfolio with six brands, we believe we have six very, very strong product lines. We have a diversified uh, market. If you go back in 1995, we're selling mainly in US and Canada. Today, we're selling in 105 countries. We have 4,200 dealers worldwide. Uh, we sell our product lines. And on top of it, at that time, we had factory mainly in Canada and in Austria. We've been uh, with Rotex for many years. And today, we have factory still. We have Finland, we have Austria. We have Canada, we have United States and Mexico. We have diversified our product portfolio. We have diversified our network and we have diversified our manufacturing footprint. And the story resonates and we, uh, we had a very successful IPO. Then that's uh, what we've been through in the last, uh, in the last uh, few months. A uh, very exciting time for, for us. And obviously at the end of the day, uh, we are in business uh, to sell product, to define the need of uh, the customer, what they're looking for, and to create as much as we can new trend, new industry. Uh, we were successful many years ago with Snowmobile. We uh, launched the watercraft, we launched the spider, and uh, uh, we're very proud that uh, in a certain way we create three industry. Uh, and, and all the industry are going, and I know the the staff and Eve presented to you, you know, the cycle, the life cycle of a product. But we really believe that uh, with the Spark, we are able to recreate another cycle, which is not easy. Uh, we've been, uh, you know, we, we, I was there in the good days, in the mid 90s where Sidu was fun. Uh, I remember, and I believe it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's an industry thing. The, uh, you know, the OEM, when, when a business is big, the OEM invests more money, more attention. The dealer is the same. Uh, I use, I remember in the mid 90s you would visit the dealer and the watercraft were in the front of the store. The last few years, the watercraft in the middle of the summer are not in the front row. That's not normal. And also the aftermarket company. 
if you have volume in an industry, the aftermarket will find ways to justify, to design a new seat, an aftermarket seat, to sell as many as they can. And as an industry, uh, we lost some momentum and we work hard to, to find a way to recreate that spark. And we believe that the name is right, a spark, and we believe that we will respark the, uh, the watercraft industry. It was not an easy mandate. We've tried it in a certain way with the 3D. Uh, when we launched the 3D a few years ago, it was an attempt to try to recreate the, the, uh, the industry. But I think at the time, the 3D, which I enjoy very much the product, uh, but the 3D was maybe a <coughs> bit too niche, a bit too, you know, difficult to ride, a bit too, uh, you could, uh, you could, a bit too difficult to splash a lot, uh, a bit too niche. And Spark, uh, when we gave to uh, Denis Lapointe the mandate to come out with the watercraft family, and the mandate was very clear, 200 trailer for the price of one. That was the mandate that we said. Like Denis will tell you, we never, I've never told him if the trailer was included on that, but that's the detail. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the team uh, pulled out the old platform that we had in the mid-90s. And they started from there. But the mandate was to have 200 trailer with all the technology. And the family needed to have an entry-level product, but also to have all the technology, four-stroke engine, the DC bell system for noise, we had to add the brake. We believe that in this industry, the IBR is a very, very important feature. And uh, we're very, very proud with what we, had to with what we have accomplished. The, the design team have done an incredible job to step back, to look at the possibilities and how we could redesign the product to make it look cool. But at the same time, we could not afford the typical way of building a watercraft. Uh, and here you had it, and uh, I would say that we tried the first prototype probably three years ago, uh, and at the time it was really, really prototype. I remember the first time it was obviously a fiberglass hull. The structure was like this, but fiberglass. It was a two-stroke engine simulating 60 horsepower, 60 simulating 90 horsepower, but we could already felt, I mean, the the fun that we could recreate with, with the Spark. And three years later, I mean, you have the, the finished product. Then for us, we're very, very uh, happy about uh, the, the overall <coughs> thing. I'm very, very proud of what the team had accomplished. And we really believe that we can uh, respark the, the industry. And it's all of us together. It's our, obviously, we need to come up with the product. But you have a big role to play if together we want to, to respark the industry to make watercraft cool again. Just, that's as simple as that. But for me, that's uh, a bit what I wanted to say. Uh, when I look at someone who can buy a Spark, a 2 plus 1 with RBR at 63.99, I think, uh, I mean, this is an incredible deal. Uh, 90 horsepower, four stroke, three cylinder engine with the IBR, I think it's an incredible deal. And I really think that uh, uh, many family who forgot about watercraft uh, will definitely consider to go back uh, in the watercraft industry. And I really, we really, really count on your collaboration that all of us together will make a difference to to create a cool, uh, cool product again and, and make more fun in the industry. Then, uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, let's make it happen. Thank you.